Hello, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, far out. Hello, uh, last year I went to Tasmania and um, had the pleasure of seeing some of the sights there. And uh, this is one particular, this is the, I'm showing you the best of the best. Um, I was walking down the street and I saw some, some lovely doors. So uh, here's uh, number 40. Uh, a very nice door. We've got the red, oh, I think that's red, against the, with the, with the, the bronze, against that sort of beige wall. You know that beige is, it looks kind of contemporary, whereas the door, it's kind of old tiny. That's nice. Yeah, I think that's a nice, uh, a nice little contrast that they got going on. Nice garden, you know, lavender. Mmm, number 32. Possibly my favourite. You know, it's got a little bit of the rustic. You know, we got the rustic next to the... They're not rustic. That's what I like about it. I like the way that the uh, the garden is sort of growing between the stones there. The pavement is really coming alive. Um, the main thing that I liked about all these doors is the fact that there are all these crazy doors. You know? And it's kind of like, kind of like these doors belonged... Uh, mm, 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 mm. Coasters. Coasters. They should make coasters with the doors. Because all, all the doors, you know, the theme is doors, but the coasters have all got different doors. And so you want to see the different doors, and so you want to change places uh, where you've got the coasters. And by changing the places where you're sitting to get a new door, you're also changing the dynamic of the room. And uh, hence, you know, sort of livening up the conversation potentially. Which I think is the whole point of having, of coasters really, of having the variable coasters. But once again we've got the lavender going on here. I mean I love this. Look at that. Look at that growing business there. Got a handrail in case you're disabled. I uh, don't really know how that's going to help because we've got stairs anyway. Yeah I mean you know this door. This kind of looks this looks like it shouldn't be in the middle of a you know in the middle of Hobart. This looks like it belongs in the country really. Those sort of acid wash kind of acid wash jeans. Acid, uh, no I mean washed out you know fence. <laughs> Number 22. See, it's completely different again. I mean, obviously, there's a bit of time. You know, there were some doors in between here which weren't particularly good. People will take uh, pictures of. I mean, I like this one, you know, once again, there's a contrast between the outside and the door. You know, very well thought out, these particular houses, these facades. I'm not sure how I feel about that, um, about that uh, metal business to open the door. Handle. A bit out of place, I feel. You know, I'm not sure I, uh, agree with its use. I, mean, I don't know why they need to lock it. Who's going around in Hobart stealing people's business and that? I don't think so. I don't think it's happening. I think they're just trying to make themselves seem more important than they are. Oh yeah, people are trying to rob me. Forget about it. And I like the little plants at the side. No, as I say, they're all they're all worth it. Well thought about. Doors. Okay, here we go. This is the this is a curious door. The curious door of Benjamin Button. What's going on here? I mean uh, it's kind of got an imperial feel to it, this one. It feels like the house, like you've got a fortress in, you know, the 1800s or whatever, and this is where the the general, the captain lives on the fortress. This is his little abode on that fortress, because he's got this, this big old bricks, uh, fairly bland door. You know, it's just you know, these thick, posts going on, you know, a letterbox saying no junk mail, that's definitely, that's definitely the, uh, the commander's house on the fortress, don't give me no junk mail, I'm too busy being a commander. Ah, uh, number five. <sighs> number five, once again, no, no junk mail, you know, I like these people, they don't mess around. Weird here, I mean, this wall is just so, it's just so red and there it is, you know. And it's got that green, it's kind of Christmassy in a way. I like that, and a little coach light going on. Very Christmassy. Santa lives here, uh, possibly. You know, that's the feel you get. Um, you know, um, I mean, maybe the, the garden was trimmed fairly regular, well, fairly close to this date. Ah. <coughs> Obviously, because, um, you know, you can see the, the cutting marks on them plants. 
but uh, well looked at, well looked after. And it's hard to achieve the sort of the sort of randomness about the gardens. And the gardens have a sort of chaotic nature about them, but it's obviously you know been hard to make that artificially, I guess. But um, that was pretty much all the doors. That was my favourite doors. That was the best part about being in Tasmania, seeing them doors. Uh, I can't remember the name of the street, so I can't tell you where it was. But if you're in Tasmania, you've got to check out these doors. And put them on coasters. Send them on postcards. That's what they look like. They look like postcards. So you can have that little post, and then, you know, stick that over the window. A little thing that says... Oh, probably post. Postage stamp, really. No, they put the postage stamp on the other side. Never mind. Yeah, there you go. Um, some Five great... I think five. One... Six, six doors, six doors from Tasmania. Uh, what else could you possibly ask for? Mm. And uh, if anyone's wondering what the hell that fluttering sand is, it's my Budriga Kepa, uh, or Kapora Gabora. I think that's how it's pronounced. For long, Kepa for short. Flying around the place, getting in my face, just being a budgie, just being a bird, flapping around. Hmm. 